the show, Five Shot Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the Notification Squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Welcome to another Five Stripe Weekly episode, and before we get started... Just a reminder that we have our Patreon. It's that new season, and it's a new season for our Patreon as well. Join us at patreon.com slash ATLUTDFANTV. We have some fun things planned for the 2022 season, so we will see you there. But uh, moving on into the news, and yeah, the uh, friendlies have started preseason matches, and uh, LA United played the Georgia Storm uh, at the training grounds, and uh, Tyler Wolf and Jackson Conway scored in that match. It was a 2-0 win, and uh, yeah, you know, you saw a little bit of the uh, the new gray training kits as well. What did you think of those training kits, Mark? Eh. <laughs> didn't, really, <laughs> didn't really excite me. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it harkens back to maybe like yesteryear a little bit, uh, maybe like the 2018 version that uh, maybe uh, has a little bit more interesting kind of like trim, but uh, just a little bit darker. Uh, that one was to this one, I think, or the other way around. Either way, but uh, yeah, that uh, starting eleven for that match was Guzan, McFadden, Campbell, Franco, uh, Gutman. Alonzo, Hosetu, Araruju, Wolf, Centeno, which was our uh, new super draft pick, and Conway. And, uh, of course, uh, yeah, they kind of siphoned in and out, uh, you know, kind of during the match, uh, you know, to give some minutes to some of the uh, kind of more fringe players in the squad, uh, building up that match fitness. It was uh, two 30-minute halves. But, uh, yeah, you also saw, uh, yeah, because Andrew Carlton does also play for the Georgia Storm, so there was a little bit of that. Um, you know, always uh, always interesting when uh, he returns. Uh, but uh, moving on to our other friendly, which uh, just happened today. Uh, we're filming this on a Sunday after that uh, friendly as well in Athens at Turner. Uh, it was a 4-0 win over the Georgia Revolution. Uh, and that starting 11 was Guzan, McFadden, Campbell, Franco, Gutman, Alonzo, Osetu, Ibarra, Aruju, Wolf, and Conway. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, to see uh, Alonzo in uh, his first start there and Ibarra, uh, you know, and also, uh, I mean, basically, Aruju was, uh, you know, showing what, uh, what he's made of and. You know, just that tremendous uh, skill and ability and that work rate. He had a goal and an assist. Uh, Wolf also got on the score sheet. Campbell as well. And super draft picks in uh, Centennial and Bloyu uh, got, uh, you know, kind of linked up. And Bloyu got on the score sheet with a header from across from Centennial. But, uh, yeah, you also saw a little bit of the uh, the mint uh, the mint away kit that uh, was mm-hmm. on some uh, you know hoodies on the bench on some players, so uh, definitely uh, eventful indeed this match. But uh, what are some takeaways uh, from you from uh, you know this one that we actually get to see uh, for this one? Yeah, um, I think uh, so. Right away, looking at the lineup, uh, I think you got you're starting to get starting to get a sense of uh, maybe how Pineda wants to set up. Um, I think it's uh, distinctly a four at the back, a four three three. it appears, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think I definitely noticed uh, Alonso getting the start, and you figure that's uh, going to be Sosa's position. But um, I think it's also smart to get Alonso the minutes now so that, uh, you know, when we need him in the season, he'll be not starting from scratch, right? Uh, he'll be at least somewhat good to, somewhat ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um and um yeah i mean i think a gutman as well i mean you know and we'll talk about the bello news but uh, obviously now a little more attention is going to be on him um 
had a solid season last year for Red Bulls, so hopefully he can replicate that with the United. Um, yeah. I think he had a, he had an assist in this one, if I remember correctly. So uh, you know, yeah. um, I think. Yeah, so you know, promising. Of course, preseason. You know, you don't want to get too caught up in the um, the stats of it all. But I will say, I think that players seeing the ball go in the back of the net is uh, something that you can't um, fake or replicate, right? And right. so, Arujo, always good for the confidence. Always good for the confidence. And uh, you know, something I've said before, Aruju getting a full off season underneath his belt. I am excited for what he's going to do this season. Um, you know, I've gushed about him before on this podcast and, you know, he seems to be, uh, looking to hit the ground running. And so, uh, yeah, I think those are probably my main takeaways. And I did, uh, peep that mint. It's definitely not white. So, yeah. uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited, man. I, I I really like, I don't know. I like the idea of this kit. Obviously, we have to see what the final design is, but yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh there's a lot of possibilities with it, uh, what they're going to do. Is it going to be more like that Real Madrid uh, kind of third kit that they had uh, mm -hmm. where it's mostly mints and then some of the other accents are, you know, the kind of the more uh, darker greens or whatever. But uh, right. yeah, it will be kind of fascinating because, yeah, uh, there was a uh, shot of Santiago Sosa that he posted on his IG story uh, where he was with Marcelino Moreno and Marcelino Moreno was wearing the hoodie. I, uh, I'm i hoping that they got the okay to post those pictures. I'm assuming they yeah. did. I just... It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. every year, like, one player uh, leaks, leaks it. something. Yeah, yeah, Franco Escobar, we're looking at you. But uh, <laughs> in either case, yeah, I thought the... Uh, fullbacks uh, provided a lot of width. Uh, McFadden and Gutman, both of them were, I think, uh, yeah, varying their service, uh, finding that open space, and uh, really battling and uh, you know making some strong tackles as well as interceptions, as well as mm -hmm. headers. And so, uh, yeah, good uh, kind of two-way performance from the the fullbacks. And then, yeah, Araujo looks like uh, maybe a guy that uh, you know wants to be the man. You know, on, mm -hmm. this, on this team, and exactly. I think uh, you know he uh, is always available, and he you know was a guy that was always trying to make something happen in this match. Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of that uh, kind of I think lack of fitness that kind of uh, reared its head, uh, kind yeah. of about ten minutes in a little bit, uh, where yeah, Revolution kind of grew into the match a little bit, but uh, yeah, you know, LA United looked in full control. Nothing really, uh, you know, bothersome, especially that second half where, yeah, the first shot on goal was at the 90th minute. So, uh, yeah, definitely, or 91st minute, really. So it's uh, mm -hmm. definitely one of those where, yeah, you know, not uh, not really a competition that's like, uh, that's going to test us too much, but it's just a good run out uh, for, uh, you know, the preseason. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, moving on from that into some transfer rumors and the first one is Jurgen Dom who uh, did mention uh, that he uh, has two more years and he intends to uh, honor that contract and well you know of course he would because you know it's a fat ass contract so yeah. uh, <laughs> you right. know, why wouldn't he but uh, yeah, yeah uh, Felipe Cardenas he said that a potential move for Jurgen Dom is imminent per LA United, and so Mexico might be the most likely destination uh, Cardenas uh, pontificates. So, very interesting, you know, uh, you have a player saying one thing and then uh, mm -hmm. the front office saying another. Huh. Lo and behold, where have we heard that before? <laughs> yep, uh, business as usual for this team. Um... <laughs> No, but it's uh, so I, I, I do want to clear something up as well, because there were people like basically coming on saying, oh, don't criticize Jurgen. Like, I don't think uh, anybody. Well, I shouldn't say that, uh, at least for us, we're not necessarily criticizing Jurgen down for getting his money. Like he sure. should absolutely do that. His agent. Uh, yeah, should deserve like you know, a <laughs> lot of that. A lot yeah. of what he's getting paid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's ten uh, percent, I think, would be in order. I know yeah, that's a half team. Um, I think but... more than ten percent probably is like. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You should be that agent's agent, but know, anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. I mean, like, it's just one of those things though, where you give this player this fat ass contract, and uh, of course, the player's not going to want to give that up, and another team probably doesn't want to pay that, and that's the price of doing business. Yeah. So you know, it's just like. It's just, 
you can't it's it's an expensive mistake that keeps coming back to haunt you and um, you know we'll see we'll see who's telling the truth in terms of uh Jurgen Dom and his movements right and so uh i mean really like i have nothing against Jurgen Dom the person he seems like a really really good uh person but it's just uh yeah he hasn't performed uh in an LA United shirt and uh yeah it's uh it's high wages so at this point you know, we got to cut our losses. And, uh, you know, if we had to have to eat a little bit of that contract, that's what we got to do. And, uh, you know, free up some of the uh, the uh, the salary cap for us to be able to maneuver and bring some, uh, some you know, players in that can really help us and uh, help us win. But, um, yeah, moving on from that, Ezekiel Barco. Well, uh, yeah, there was a lot of rumors uh, over this past week. And so Cesar Luis Merlo... He reported that, uh, yeah, basically there was uh, a move that, uh, you know, not only uh, like River Plate was wanting to come in for him uh, for a two-year loan, but uh, yeah, it pretty much that, uh, yeah, he went down there for a medical and while well, River Plate pretty much announced it, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, and that's... Uh, yeah, they didn't announce the numbers, but Merlo did say that it was uh, going to be seven million for fifty percent of his rights, and so uh, yeah, that the deal is done it has been announced on one end, but uh, Darren Eels during the broadcast for uh, <coughs> excuse me the uh, Georgia Revolution match uh, basically said that it's not fully complete yet, so maybe there's still some. Uh, some fees that they're still working out, but uh, yeah, this is the second one that, uh, you know, in terms of a player being announced by their club uh, that uh, either they're coming from or going to, and then oh, uh, United have not uh, announced it yet. And so, uh, what, yeah, what, what do you think is going on? Oh, man. So, like, we've had the, we've seen this with Almeida, right? And we'll get to him in a second, but where they announced that uh, he's leaving, but you know that that's one thing like he hasn't actually left yet though Marco it appears has is in Argentina he's he's there's a video the of him there yeah. he's <laughs> pictured with the uh you know their front office taking photos signing the contract he's in but, their like, shirt <laughs> he's literally been announced like yeah. I there's he's not coming back back like Barco's not coming back it would be ridiculous yeah. silly at this point if he came back so yeah we, we, he's out the door. Uh, I'm assuming, like, the only thing that, as you said, uh, with that transfer, uh, the only details I, ma I imagine is, you know, dotting the I's, crossing T's, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, now, linked with this transfer is Tiago Almeida, right? And uh, so, you know, recording this on Sunday, news of the day in the football world is uh, the Mason Greenwood thing. Um, perhaps you've heard of it. If you haven't, uh, I would just say trigger warning when you go to look it up. It's a yeah, really it's ugly situation. Very disheartening. Mm -hmm. um, Beyond and disheartening. The reason, exact, yeah, man, exactly. The reason why I bring this up, though, in regards to LA United and Almeida is because I think uh, there are serious questions as to what Manchester United knew in that case and how long did they know. And so we go back to uh, a week and a half ago, Darren Eel saying that... Uh, Atlanta and I is doing all this due diligence with Almeida. We really need to know. I mean, I, you know, it's not even that. We we need to know that the club knows what what's going on, like once and for all. And uh, you know, like there hasn't been an update on the case, right? So it's still unclear at best. And it's just, it's. I cannot say this enough. It's just, I really don't think it's wise to. Uh, be trying to sign a player with a case hanging over his head and you don't know the details of it like this could really like end up having a huge blowback on LA United and that's not like the main that's obviously not the main thing the main issue here is you know any potential victims mm -hmm. and and you know that end of it but like yep. I just I just think we're playing with fire and so I'm just you know with that news today it just I, we really I, we, we need clarity on this situation yeah and definitely if uh, uh, speaking on that Greenwood situation if anyone uh, does feel like they're in a uh, you know hopeless situation definitely you know uh, there are people that uh, you know uh, are going through the same things unfortunately and uh, 
you know, there are kind of organizations that you can reach out to uh, in order to, uh, you know, be heard and know that, yeah, you know, uh, you can, uh, you know, stick up for yourself and, uh, you know, find some sort of way out of a really, really terrible situation for yourself. Um, and so definitely, uh, yeah, you know, thoughts go out to, uh, yeah, Greenwood's ex-girlfriend in that sense and also... Um, you know any potential victims in any of these uh, these cases here, but um, yeah, back to uh, you know in terms of Barco and Almeida, well, it's you know uh, one's clearly left the club because uh, there isn't space in the salary structure for uh, Barco, and then Almeida coming in, um, yeah, like this NFL due diligence that they've said, like. Has there been uh, NFL NFL level due diligence uh, in the past from LA United? I mean, uh, I'm hoping that they're more just like learning their lesson versus like uh, showing that they've had examples of this. Because what, like, we're looking at Gabriel Hainse, where you know was that (laughs) NFL level due diligence? So yeah, you know, definitely something that uh, you know we need to I think uh, start to rectify and rectify you know immediately, really in that sense. Uh, But Moving on to another transfer rumor uh, okay. in that George Bello. Oh, man, this one's uh, a little mini saga not, in one I was gonna day, say, really. Yeah, this is not this is not one transfer rumor. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is multiple, uh, multiple, multiple reports and uh, all in the span of one day, really. It's like uh, this, we got <laughs> a week's worth of update in one day. Yeah, like, in one it was freaking day. day. Yeah, yeah, basically, uh, I mean. Uh, I had some other things to do yesterday, but it was <laughs> it was a lot, a lot at once, and uh, you know that's that's what I uh, that's what I do for you guys, just so you know. <laughs> but uh, Not here yeah. Grinded. yeah, yeah, but uh, but either way, so it starts with George Bello uh, with Fabrizio Romano saying that Circle Bruges. Uh, they have uh, come in for him for a, I believe, $3.75 million fee plus a sell-on clause uh, and that there was an agreement reached. But, uh, yeah, and that Bello wanted a chance to move to Europe immediately. But, uh, yeah, the talks were ongoing on personal terms. Uh, and he said, here we go soon, possibly. Well, au contraire, uh, okay. the... Uh, <laughs> Basically, uh, a lot of uh, American journalists pretty much chimed in, in a sense, uh, and uh, that they said the Bell situation, far from done, uh, that the player wants a move to uh, Bundesliga side Armenia Bieleford, and uh, and that was uh, reported by Grant Wall. And then, so, yeah, you know, in that sense, uh, you know, well, Bello, his contract ends on July 1st, And so, yeah, he could already sign a pre-contract with another team. He could uh, just leave on a free. I mean, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, like very much uh, Bello has the power here. And it's kind of in that sense where, you know, the offer, though, from Bielefeld, or Bielefeld, rather, sorry, uh, was only $600,000 with a low sell-on fee, and that was from Paul Tenorio. And so, uh, yeah, you know, definitely not as good of an offer, I would say, as uh, the 3.75. But, uh, yeah, uh, Felipe Cardenas also reported that uh, LA United had turned down multiple $4 million offers for George Bello, uh, you know, whether in this transfer window or maybe previous transfer windows. But either way, you know, that fee just keeps getting chipped down and it's not uh, not as attractive anymore well yeah you know when you're holding out uh and then a contract is running down well yeah you know it's uh it pretty much shows that well yeah you know bellow pretty much had the pick of like uh you know what he wanted to do and mm-hmm. uh you know in this sense romano and joe patrick uh they both confirmed that uh yeah Elena and I did agree to terms late Saturday night with mm. Armenia Bielefeld. And yeah, uh, basically that it would be a $2 million fee with uh, a 25% sell-on clause. 
So, mm-hmm. you know, definitely a little bit better. I would say, yeah, definitely like four times around, uh, around four times better uh, right. than what initially was uh, was pitched. So, um, yeah. you know, I think if you're looking at straight up numbers, okay, sure, uh, a little low, but uh, definitely much better than what it was before. But mm-hmm. uh, also, Eels said that, uh, yeah, Bello, that situation, you know, uh, it's not uh, quite done yet, but it's um, almost there. But they're right. trying to do right by the player and by the club, right. of course. And, um, right. yeah, you know, all that being said, what do you think? I mean, you know, a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack. That's exactly what I was going to say. And so, yeah, um, and I, I want to be clear about this, too, because, again, this is going to cast Bocanegra in the spotlight. I don't think this is an easy situation, right? And so, uh, Bello, let, let, let's say, for example, uh, they turned down offers for Bello over the past year. I'm not sure if uh, selling Bello, you know, how we would have felt about it back then, uh, especially for three to four million dollars, you know, like on the cusp of uh, 2021 or even in the middle of 2021. I, I don't know, like that that may have been a tough sell, I think, for the team. Um, and then what do you do then? Do you recall Gutman halfway through the loan, you know, when he's established and doing well? And so... I think uh, it seems like they did want to wait to this point, um, but then t- buying teams there did what they're going to do, which is a low ball and lane United. And so I think uh, what it ends up being is a test of uh, Boca Negra's, you know, uh, ability to negotiate and a test of his uh, relationships, right? And so um, in dealing with other clubs and their executives, does he have that cachet? Um, you know, if he did, if they were able to get Bielefeld uh, up from 600k to uh, 2 million, 2 million plus uh, 25% sell on, uh, okay, that's that's actually not bad, <laughs> you know, like all things considered. Um, and and then, one has to think if uh, that circle Bruges uh, offer was maybe more to you know kind of move up that offer from uh, Bielefeld because yeah there's also that where um, you know there's some aspects of it where Bello if he yeah did go to this side uh, you know Bruges where um, yeah you know they're a young side but they have also two other left backs on their right. team um, you know they're like I believe seventh in the Belgian division mm-hmm. Uh and then meanwhile, you know, you have Bielefeld as a, you know, I think 14th in Bundesliga right now, where, right. you know, it's uh, maybe they're not as competitive in their league, but, you know, you play against bigger sides, you play against, uh, I think, much stronger competition on a regular basis. Right. So I think, uh, you know, there is that aspect of it that uh, is to be considered as well. But go on. And that's the thing, yeah, like players have to be strategic. At the end of the day, it's their careers, right? Like Atlanta United is not gonna guide George Bello's career from here on out. He's gotta do that for himself. And so, um, and I certainly don't blame George Bello for rejecting a move and holding out for a destination that he thinks is best for him. And, uh, you know, again, I think that's a test of, uh, of in that case, uh, Bocanegra's relationships with the player um, and the front office relationships with the player in general. Now, I do think that in the end, they did the right thing um you know which is and i think that doing right by the by the player is key in this uh <laughs> one of the funny things about uh about all this bellow talk is that it invited the uh usmnt's twitter uh onto at Blaine united uh you know and you know, just the usual utter nonsense take. being spewed the, the uh, usual well the usual yeah. utter nonsense that comes yes. from that sector of twitter in my opinion but yeah yes. i mean it's just funny that at the beginning of the year right these people were getting on the united's case for not letting bellow and miles robinson go with uh jason crease right uh t- with the u23s and how they're holding back his career and stunting their development and blah 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 and now one is going to bundesliga and one is starting versus canada in the World Cup qualifier. Like, exactly. come on now. Exactly. <laughs> that's happening now, uh, which, by the way, yes, uh, that's a, that other bit of news that Miles Robinson uh, did make the starting 11 against Canada in a very crucial match that's being played today, pretty much currently while we're uh, recording this. But uh, uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> good guys are down 1-0 at the moment. But Oh, yeah. shoot. But uh, <laughs> either way, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, yeah, okay, so, yeah, 
Um, you know, okay, there is this aspect of, okay, uh, is Boca and the front office, um, you know, doing right by the players on a general basis? Not so much all the time, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> right. I think, you know, when they're looking out for the best interest of the club, I mean, I think it's in that sense of, like, it actually does make sense. It's like, uh, why did we hold Robinson and Bello back from the U23s camp? Because, yeah, we had our own camp going on, and we needed to, you know, uh, get going with a new coach. So it's something that, yeah, you know. In Champions League, which starts earlier than the, the season, as we know. Like, come exactly. on. Yeah, there was, like, yeah. What, why would we have sacrificed our uh, our preparation for the preparation of the U.S. men's national team who still have U23s fully, and U23s exactly it's like but uh those who didn't see that thread uh because he started blocking people and like <laughs> basically uh you know uh pretty much backtracking on a lot of the things that he was saying but uh, uh one of those things was that he thought that Carlton was a better player than Barco and Yamil Assad and that Chris Gosselin should have uh uh, had more playing time, and that's, uh, yeah, numerous other non-salient arguments that uh, pretty much nullified anything he was talking about because it showed that, yeah, he doesn't actually pay... He, it's basically just a lot of hatred being spewed at Atlanta United, uh, you know, and there are other clubs that also do this as well, uh, and it's not just the U.S. men's national team. Uh, yeah, the, the sense of... Um, of nationalism here I think is something that uh, you know we won't maybe get into too hard but it is something that's like um, yeah you just gotta think about it from the club side like the club you know they they need to like they're pr protecting their assets here versus yeah. you know like but go ahead <laughs> no no it's not that I mean I was I was agreeing with you pretty much yeah, yeah I mean <laughs> it's just insane and uh, so either way um, it's kind of just hilarious to that degree, mm -hmm. but to circle back all the way back to Bello and mm -hmm. him going to, uh, Bielefeld, um, yeah, I think it's this, like him leaving for, uh, this side for 2 million in this window, I think in a COVID depressed market, unfortunately it's what makes the most sense. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like I don't think, uh. We've really flubbed it too hard, per se. If mm -hmm. we did, if we did, um, you know, reject offers for four million in this window, well, you know, that's uh, that's definitely that sucks. But um, yeah. at the end of the day, do we really need the money? Right. Not really. You know, right. like and the right. fees that come in don't really help us in that regard for uh, creating more cap space anyway. You know, so it's just like love the yeah. rules. Right, so the two million, <laughs> yeah, for uh, yeah, for Arthur Blank is really a drop in the bucket. So, like, I would say the six hundred k looks bad more than anything else, right? Yes. It's the optics of the matter because, it, and I think that, like, if I were another MLS team with young players coming through, I would be annoyed if a if a big MLS team. Oh, yeah. It took 600k for one of theirs right so um i think there's that aspect of it but uh yeah to every every other point you made i think you're, you're completely spot on because i think the big key here is doing right by the player like we've seen this with uh aaron long uh most recently Callan acosta paul Ariola, players who are basically like hey uh they did not do right by me and unfortunately yeah, like <laughs> Yeah, like they're disgruntled openly, and unfortunately, it's a part of uh, U.S. soccer culture, both in MLS and NWSL. And so, I think that uh, I think it makes sense for Atlanta United to set a good precedent in that regard. And uh, and because you know, it's this like with Miggy, like it was a coup to get him here, right? Like he was easily one of the best players uh, to ever grace MLS. He was more than likely always going to go to Europe. Somebody like Bello going to Europe, I think, is more of a win. Um, more of a, I think, a good reflection of the club itself and, and, and its process. Because, I mean, like, it wasn't always smooth, right? There were definitely ups and downs, but the fact of the matter is, he's going to a Bundesliga club and he's going to have the chance to show what he can do at a pretty young age. Yeah. And at a good level where uh, that league has a history of developing American players. So, 
definitely uh, something great. Something not so great is that uh, Greg Berhalter, uh, according to Sam Stechgall, uh, and it has since been confirmed that uh, Brooks Lennon has been sent back to Atlanta uh, due to an ankle injury. And of course, uh, you know, you get flashbacks of Miles Robinson and his injury with, uh, uh, you know, Berhalter's camp. But uh, definitely one of those things where, yeah, a lot of people are pissed. A lot of fans are uh, in outrage at Berhalter <laughs> because uh, I think, yeah, it is. I mean, it's not only our players that get injured, but I mean, yeah, you know, this is the second one. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I think there's also a reason why Atlanta United are going to withhold their players from <laughs> their camps sometimes. Because, yeah, oh, you know, like, you send them back injured, like, too often. Well, yeah, you know, it uh, it starts to kind of screw up roster construction, and especially right. in a league where there's such limited resources to so many things. Like, yeah. yeah you're going to be a little miffed. And yeah, you're going to be a little bit, you know, uh, handcuffed by the actual league structure itself. So, you know, yeah. I don't know if you have thoughts I, on that. Uh, yeah, I will say in this case, uh, definitely, I don't, it's not, obviously it's not quite the same as Miles. Like, Brooklyn is not quite as important as Miles Robinson for one. Um, it, it seems like, uh, I think uh, Doug Roberson or somebody who was there reported that he wasn't in a boot, wasn't on crutches, so... That's a positive sign, at least, um, you know, and hopefully uh, hopefully this is a precautionary matter where, um, yeah, you know, like he just didn't look right or he felt a little something and Barry Halter uh, did, uh, uh, did the precautionary move of just sending him back. And, you know, it's hopefully this doesn't pre disrupt the pre his preseason too much. He still has four weeks to recover. Um, you know, we have Ronald Hernandez there, Eddie McFan Mac McFadden seems to be showing his stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, like, I'm not too worried about it yet. If this is something that keeps reoccurring, then, you know, uh, then I might get upset. But mm -hmm. I think in this case, Bearhalter may have done the right thing, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, and, yeah, uh, you know, I want some details on how this happened to begin with. I mean, sure. you know, sure, uh, it might just be like a roll of the ankle uh, yeah. that happens or all the time. Type thing. Right, yeah, right. But, or if it was a strong tackle from a, a teammate, well, then I'm going to have some uh, <laughs> some words. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. which teammate? Uh, yeah. <laughs> just want to come outside. <laughs> exactly. I just yeah, I just want to just want to want to talk, man. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, uh, so that is it for the news and pretty much the entire episode, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is. Do you feel like we need to bring in a veteran backup striker? We still haven't done so. And, uh, yeah, we have some Albatross contracts still on the wages. So, uh, yeah, definitely let us know in the comments below what you think about that. And anything that we talked about in this episode, of course, as well. What you think of the first preseason match that you could watch? Definitely get us and add us in those comments below. But guys, that's pretty much the episode. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And for Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you so much for watching.